The timeline for The Legend of Zelda is confusing, like really confusing, and then it created countless videos telling you exactly what it means with the whole split and everything, and I believe that all of this is completely unnecessary. The Legend of Zelda doesn't need a timeline, at least until Nintendo proved it did. Up until the official timeline's release, the games had little to no connective tissue. The only things that were carried over from each major entry are the main three players, the hero, the princess, and the demon king. Each of these three have a wide variety of forms, with each form of the hero giving a specific name based on his accomplishments and the era in which he appears. In some appearances, the demon king is that of a beast, a monstrosity plaguing the land, in others, he's but a man. The princess is nearly always the same, but there all was that one time when she was a pirate. Um, and while there are trivial differences, the story repeats itself. The demon king seeks the Triforce, and the hero and princess must stop him at all costs. In the original game, it meant the hero of Hyrule finding the Triforce pieces himself and then slaying the demon king. In Ocarina of Time, it meant giving the demon king the Triforce of power so that the hero of time can grow old enough to slay him. Each of these games tell a different story, with different themes, backdrop settings, but the essence is all the same. It then Skyward Sword released, and we were given a reason as to why the conflicts of these games are so similar. With the release of Skyward Sword in the reference book Hyrule Historia, we were given a timeline, connecting all Zelda games into one quote-unquote coherent story. This timeline tells the story of a war between Demise, the root of all evil in Hyrule, and the reincarnations of the goddess Hylia and her chosen hero. At the end of Skyward Sword, the first game chronologically in the timeline, Demise places a curse upon the land upon his defeat at the hands of the Hero of Sky. <sighs> Extraordinary, you stand as a paragon of your kind, human. You fight like no man or demon I have ever known, but this is not the end. My hate never perishes, it is born anew in a cycle without end. I will rise again. Those like you, those who share the blood of the goddess and the spirit of the hero, they are eternally bound to this curse. An incarnation of my hatred shall ever follow your kind, dooming them to wander a blood-soaked sea of darkness for all time. This curse sets into motion the rest of the timeline, and sets into stone what I'm going to call the Hyrulean Archetypes. Now, the definition of an archetype, according to a simple Google search, is a very typical example of a certain place or thing, an original that has been imitated, or a recurrent symbol or motif in literature, art, or mythology. I am mostly going to be focusing on those last two definitions. Archetypes come in all forms, and have been derived from myths and literature, and because they're derived from, the, from ancient stories, they're patterns that we use to help understand this complex existence we live in. And these archetypes are universal because of two distinct qualities. They come from different cultures and different time periods. They are patterns of storytelling that simplifies the human condition. A prevalent example of an archetype is that of the mentor, the wise man. This is a character that helps and guides the hero to do great things that they themselves cannot. Characters that fit this mold are Merlin from the Arthurian myths, Nestor from Homer's Iliad, and a more modern example, Obi-Wan Kenobi from Star Wars. As each Zelda game was being made, the storytellers created a pattern, mirroring that of certain archetypes, the hero, the villain, the goddess, the orphan, etc and it seems quite clear that they realized this and wove it into the grander narrative of The Legend of Zelda. 
and it all ties into Demise's curse. With this curse, the variations of the incarnations of the hero, the princess, and the demon king are woven into what I mentioned earlier at the title of this video, the Hyrulean archetypes. While each incarnation of these trio varies, they all share the same essence. The hero is the one chosen by the goddess Hylia, wields the Triforce of Courage, and can pull the Blade of Evil's Bane from its pedestal. The princess is the reincarnation of the goddess Hylia, wields the Triforce of Wisdom, and seals the evil away. The Demon King is the manifestation of Demise's hatred, wields the Triforce of Power, and is set on remaking Hyrule in his own image. When Skyward Sword provided the incarnations of these archetypes and narrative reason to exist, what the next entry of the series did is put these archetypes into the land of Hyrule itself, and in their very culture. Now the Hyrulean archetypes aren't just a storytelling device used to retcon the games to create the timeline. Breath of the Wild used these archetypes to put the game into a new context. Now at the beginning of this video, when I said that Nintendo gave the timeline a reason to exist, I'm specifically referencing to the fallout of its release. I believe that Nintendo saw people attempting to figure it out and realize their mistake. So they took the timeline and boiled it down to its essence, and in Breath of the Wild, made it into Hyrule's mythology. In Breath of the Wild, upon meeting Emba, she proceeds to tell the Hero of the Wild about what happened 10,000 years prior, a legend that tells the story of Calamity Gammon, the latest reincarnation of the Demon King and how every time he appears, the hero and the princess are there to stop him. In universe, this cycle has happened so many times that to them, the cycle's origin appears to be unknown, and the prominent figures are all boiled down to their essence in these stories of old. Now the land of Hyrule itself has its own set of archetypal figures, just like our own does, and they became a part of its history, and with the sequel of Breath of the Wild just around the corner, hopefully, and the very cryptic trailer showing off more of the hero, and the princess, and the demon king, I can't wait to see what Breath of the Wild 2 does in regards to the Hyrulean archetypes.